These two girls, dressed in yukata, are walking down the hill to Zabujuban's Noryo Matsuri. This is an annual festival held at the end of August, the hottest month in Tokyo, and its name literally means cooling off in the evening. It is an extremely popular festival with over 300,000 people attending, 50 countries participating, and over 300 booths of food and games. It is, a, it is very popular with young people, and as a result, you can see lots of yukata, the traditional summer wear of the Japanese. This has inspired my review of the end of summer fountain pen inks. This handsome couple's yukatas brought to my mind Sailor 123 and Tasia's lip color number four. These lovely ladies' yukatas reminded me of Penthouse's Kazahana and Sunrise Trading's Blue Moon. These pretty ladies were drinking Lamine, a traditional soda popular at festivals. I'm reviewing Sun Trading's ink of the same name, Lamine Noyatsu. With darker, deeper colors, these lovely ladies inspired Pantanote's Aoiro Nagori and Tasia's lip color number four, a pink that wants to turn brown on you. We'll step away from the festival for a quick review of these inks. Sailor 123 is a complex color that is neither too wet nor too dry. And in a fine nib, it is almost looks like pencil. In a medium nib, it looks gray and then starts to show some real colorful characteristics in a stub. The gray is edged in pink and purple. The chromatography was where it really shined. You see it truly is a complex color and it shows up on the edges of my 1.1 stub writing. The ink splotches were purple, edged, and green. With my fledgling filming skills, I cut out all the water resistance tests, so I'll just have to tell you about them. On all the water resistance tests, I dropped water on the ink and blotted it up right away. This ink left colorful but readable traces. It is truly an interesting and complex color. Tasia lip color number four is called burgundy. It is a straightforward, bright pinky burgundy color. Going from a fine nib to a medium nib to a 1.5 stub, it just gets successively darker. On the splotch test, it was a flat burgundy color with a little gold sheen around the edges. The chromatography was straightforward. It is a fairly wet ink with a surprising amount of water resistance if the water is blotted up right away. This next ink, Penhouse's Saijiki line, a color called Kazahana, is a very strange ink and will probably not suit most people's needs. It is, a, it is a very thin, light colored ink with a very unusual pastel green color, as you can see in the cap. You can barely see the writing with a fine nib and only slightly better with a medium nib. The best would be a 1.5 stub or larger. It is a beautiful sea green blue pastel that maybe an artist may be able to make use of. It is surprisingly water resistant. The ink splotch is flat with no sheen and the chromatography shows light blue and green. Next we have Sunrise Trading Company's line called Doctor's Ink. This ink color is called Blue Moon. It is a saturated dark turquoise blue that really pops and it has a lot of surfactant in it so although it is very saturated it is a very wet ink and easy to write with. In a fine line it looks navy and then strangely in a medium line it looks lighter and then in a 1.5 it looks more turquoise. It takes a little longer to dry and is so saturated that it is fairly water resistant. The ink splatter never really dried and the chromatography had blue and purple. If you like saturated inks, this is the ink for you. Here you can see the Lamine bottle on the label. This ink is also from Sunrise Trading Company and is called Lamine no Yatsu. It is a light bright blue with no other tones. It is a scented ink that smells like Lamine soda. If you've never had Lamine soda, it kind of smells like bubblegum. 
It is fairly light in the fine nib and medium nib and is probably best in larger nibs like a 1.5. It is neither a wet drink, wet ink or a dry ink and washes off quite easily. The ink splatter and chromatography is a straightforward blue. The next color is also from the Tassia Lip Color line. It is number four, Corinth Pink. At first I thought it would be a kind of frivolous color as they give you these pictures to color in the lips and the faces with the matching ink color. But this turned out to be a bronzy, peachy, brown pink complex color that I really enjoy. The fine line is almost brown and could be work appropriate in some businesses. The medium line takes on a more peach color and then the 1.1 takes on more of a pink color. It is a fairly water resistant because of the pink and blue color that's in there. The ink splatter is a dark burgundy and it's a flat, almost dusty color with no sheen at all. The real surprise was the chromatography. It has blue, orange, pink, and yellow. It is an interesting complex color that is neither wet nor dry. The last ink of summer is Pen to Notes Stationery Stores Ao Iro no Nagori, which means the traces of blue. It is from Pen to Notes Stationery Stores Letters from Fukushima line. It is a dark turquoise that vacillates between a bright blue and a dark turquoise tinged with red. It is a semi-wet, well-behaved ink with a slight bit of water resistance. Interestingly, the fine line was darker than the medium line. I checked several times, but a medium nib gives it a brighter hue. The 1.5 stub is definitely a dark turquoise that has a red sheen just on the outlines. The ink splatter had a definite red sheen and the chromatography had a slight bit of dark burgundy on the end. Overall, this is a well-behaved, fairly saturated turquoise with some burgundy sheen. These fountain pen colors for the end of summer was inspired by the colorful mat cities of Japan. Thank you to all the lovely people that agreed to both pose and inspire me. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up or any feedback in the comments to include inks that you would like to see reviewed. If you would like to see more fountain pen related videos or offbeat videos about Asia, please subscribe. I post every Friday night, Tokyo time. You let this go. Vamos un, dos, tres.